Hi. Are you someone who understands and prioritizes branding in business? Are you a small business owner or someone in the management, marketing department or branding function of a company or even a branding consultant? If you are at some point of time, you must have heard of trademark law or intellectual property law. In that case, this episode is for you. In this seventh episode of the Utsav Mukherjee Intellectual Property and Technology Law Show, I am going to tell you about what kind of marks you can adopt and have registered as trademarks under the trademark law in India. So, for those of you who don't know, I am an intellectual property law- lawyer and technology law advisor affiliated to the law firm. I litigate and also advise uh, in affiliation with this law firm. And any views or opinions that I express in today's episode are mine alone, and not that of any other person or entity. So I have started this series to spread awareness on intellectual property and technology law. Let me first tell you about the kind of trademarks that can be adopted under trademark law in India. So what kind of trademark should you use for a brand? Many of you think that adopting a trademark which tells consumers about the kind of product or service that you offer or its most fascinating features is the kind of mark that you can adopt. Well, guess what? You cannot do that. You may be surprised, but one of the main absolute grounds for refusal to register a trademark is that the mark is descriptive of the kind, purpose or quality of the product. Similarly, as per trademark law, no registration would be given to a mark that is generic or common to the trade for which the product has been created. I've actually been in cases before courts where I've seen the problems that arise with brands using descriptive trademarks. Now let me give you some examples of descriptive marks that cannot be adopted. So. Words like light beer or polo shirt can never be registered as trademarks because both describe the type of product, right? And the reason behind this uh, law is that nobody can claim monopoly over a common descriptive word. So the word bread cannot be a trademark and the word fast food cannot be either. These are both descriptive words which on their own simply denote the type of product and hence cannot be type of trademarks. Now, a descriptive mark can be registered in certain circumstances if and those circumstances are that if that mark is descriptive or has acquired secondary meaning in the course of trade. So for a mark to acquire secondary meaning, there are actually two requirements. The first is that the mark must become distinct. The second is that the mark must become so closely related or synonymous to a particular product and brand in the public mind that the public automatically thinks of that brand when that particular word is used. So it's not necessary that the mark has to be in the market for a certain number of years. It simply needs to have acquired secondary meaning. However, long usage in the market is still one of the factors which makes it more favorable for the authorities or courts to come to the conclusion that that mark has indeed acquired the status of a well-known mark or that it has acquired secondary meaning. So there are also some other factors which can be taken into consideration for determining whether a mark has acquired secondary meaning and these are the, whether the geographic area over which the mark is used, you know, the market share of that particular product uh, being sold under that mark, the portion of the relevant class of persons who claim to know of the mark, and the amount of money invested by the company in promoting that mark. Right. And uh, like I uh, briefly mentioned before, that if the mark acquires the status of a well known mark prior to registration, then it doesn't matter even if it's a descriptive, right? So uh, a well known mark is basically a mark which is. Uh, garnered a huge reputation and is well known by you know the masses in society uh, because of its because of its goodwill because of its sometimes because of its long usage right and this is a particular designation given under the trademark act to certain marks it's not very easily given it has to be proven that it really is a well known mark so now what should an ideal mark look like in all these circumstances right an ideal mark would be one that is arbitrary arbitrary here meaning which has no connection with the type of product for which that mark or which that uh, trade name is being used. Think of the brands all around you, right? As someone who loves restaurants, I can think of a couple of famous restaurant brands, right? McDonald's, Haldirams, and these names have nothing to do with the type of services or cuisine being ordered under them, right? On the other hand, a name like Pizza Hut is suggestive of the type of food that it offers, where it has acquired secondary meaning. So why is all this important? Coming to think about it, the power of a brand name It's such that it attracts customers irrespective of whether the name indicates the type of products or services being sold under the name. And the brand name or trademark consists of the reputation or goodwill built by the business over the years. This is why it is so important to comply with trademark law when choosing a trademark or trade name 
we would never want for that mark or name to be struck down by a court or denied registration by the trademarks registry simply because it didn't fulfill certain basic legal requirements. So, you know, I hope you all enjoy today's episode. I would like to conclude now and I hope you gained something from today's episode. So stay tuned for more episodes of the Utsav Mukherjee Intellectual Property Technology Law Show. Thank you.